Producing your own band is uh, something that I've always said shouldn't be done, uh, which makes me a hypocrite. The good thing about our band is, is, is we're a democracy with a leader, which is cool. You know, this isn't about being clever, this is about being honest, like truly, truly honest. It's bittersweet to know that this is the last thing that's ever going to be done here. Good afternoon, motherfuckers! Welcome to my studio! Wait till the kids get to hear this shit, man. They're going to fucking shit a brick. We're all linked to the same brain. For this particular record, it was Eric that really kind of started the spark that created the, the fire, if you will. The brunt of the story with this record is definitely what Brent and Eric go through emotionally and, and physically with their, their issues and kind of how we support them. I had a really, really rough spot happened to me after we toured Amaryllis and I had some just some emotional and some mental issues pop up and they kind of got the best of me again but we all had to kind of build each other back up again and this is really a journey of those four years oh my god they're coming from all Glatten directions spiel. Glatten spiel. and all right, we gotta do one for my command do one for Chris If only you knew love is on the way on the um, clock of the <laughs> In Charleston, South Carolina, at the at Ocean Industry Studios, which is owned by Shinedown's bassist slash producer, Eric Bass. And we're, uh, we're making the sixth uh, Shinedown record. It's not really a commercial studio. I never built it to be that. Um, it's meant to be sort of like a, a living room that you make records in. It's kind of become our home base for kind of the writing process and recording. You know, before doing this entire record here, we did, you know, Her Name is Alice, Mo some of that was done here. Diamond Eyes, Cut the Cord was done here. This is this is the first time we've done a full record here, though. And uh, it's, it's actually poetic because after this record, I'm, I'm closing this place down and, and moving elsewhere. When the, the writing process for The Sound of Madness was going on, uh, the band came and, and uh, that's actually how I met these gentlemen. So that uh, was the first thing I did here and it's gonna be the last thing I do here. Romantic serendipity. We have uh, we have Mr. Doug McKean engineering the record, who uh, engineered uh, The Sound of Madness and Amaryllis. I, I thought it was a good move to bring him back in for this record. My job is to capture what this band is and, and help them get to where they want to be sonically. But using their equipment and, it, you know, it's great being in this room because it just, it really does sound different, you know? He really, really knew what he was doing. Like, not only was he artistic and he had taste, but he knew the equipment, and he knew what he wanted, and he knew how to get it. This band writes, like, you know, they're pretty honest songs. They're sometimes pretty serious subject matters, but uh, they also like to have a good time, so. Uh, Eric Rickert, who has uh, worked with me for going on 15 years. We brought Hoogie with us. Yeah, he's, he's here teching all the guitars for us. During the drum portion, we had Mike Fasana, who was the drum tech on Sound of Madness, Amaryllis, and a part of Threat to Survival, yeah. <laughs> Working on your record um, is a labor of love. It, it holds a lot of weight because after it's done here, you give it to the world. Uh, this is Mr. Ted Jensen, and he has done the last five Shinedown records. He just completed uh, our new record, Attention, Attention. Worked on a lot of records that have been sort of self-produced by the band, but to have it produced to this level internally is almost unheard of. We wanted you to know that Eric actually played the piano on everything. That's his <laughs> foot. He didn't do this shit in a computer. He actually went out and played a real piano. You could hear his foot. <laughs> and then that last, you know, where the drum bird is right on the seat at the end, the drums are, you know, are doing their thing and going out. Then just don't go don't go out to the last note though.
last night. I was like, I don't know how many more of these I have in me. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the hardest on him um, than us. That's any labor of love is that. And if, if it's perfect, if every day is perfect, then it's not worth doing. We would rather lose our minds making it than lose our minds watching someone else try to make it. Is there changes in this record with Shinedown? Absolutely. This is a, a captured moment of where we are right now, musically and our minds. But you're never going to change that guy's voice. Counting down from 10 to 1, faster than a hurricane. Calling out to everyone, are you mad or insane? Quicker when you carry us, and better once you realize. Finding someone you can trust, it's results, check your pulse. Let me clear my throat, let me catch. Bowl cut. Bowl Straight cut. up. Because <laughs> don't you, <laughs> don't like you agree? Remember when you were a kid? Remember when you were 12? Right before you went into like 7th grade? Mm -hmm. The most awkward, weird, you know, awkward years possible. It's like Wonder Years. No, those were horrible years. Yeah. They were tough. But this is my cut. This is that cut that's, right there. That's the bowl cut? That helps not age me. I had a rat tail until I was probably 10. I had one too, I can't lie. I got my hair cut yesterday. I did that for you. I don't have any product. I don't know. I haven't cut my hair in Look at this. Years, so. Look at that. Get you some of that right there. They told me, we're not waiting on you to be clever. We're just waiting on you to be real. And uh, that was really freeing, actually. There was a lot more at stake, I think, on this because I really wanted to be honest um, because every song on this record came from a very real place. It's, it's really all or nothing, and that's because they've given me that confidence, too. If you're gonna say it, man, just make sure you shout it you know, as loud as you possibly can so that uh, you don't look back and go, I wish I would have done this, whatever you our feeling right now, just let it go. We're in the drum tracking process and I don't have any answers for drums right now on this. There was one song that we were working on for the record where it didn't really have drums on it and, and Brent came in and said let's just go in there and play drums and ended up changing that song. Don't be humble man. Tell you like 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 just put you it all in that song. Put it all man. out there totally man. Like one, you know man. I made that song happen. You did? He, he did make that song happen. <laughs> Cause it's about to get heavy right now something like that close to that it's a lot of work man to put this together I like to sit behind the drums just here yeah the front shit. that's what singers are for guitar players Sweet. live you can't even see you it. just flame. it's just hair and teeth that's all it is yeah yeah it's just flame <laughs> you just see like a little figure in there Eric's like a a really big Ben Folds fan and he saw Ben Folds do this uh it was like a video, but he had like 15 acoustic guitar players all playing the exact same thing, like in this live uh, atmosphere or whatever. And uh, he was like, that'd be cool to do. And he thought this song would, would work really, really well for that. Twice. So. And the turn around, then the big turnaround push at the end of the chorus. Of to have big rock drums on it, and we right. did big rock drums on it. So Barry really did a great job and accented certain things in certain places, and I, you know, I have to kind of feel it out and figure it out if it's gonna sound better just for everything just to be static the whole time, kind of innocuous, you know, right? or if we need to start accenting certain things. How about this? If it, if it ends up being nothing but texture, it'll be awesome. 
Because there's going to be a full string section on it as well. Probably in that room. Yeah. It'd be nice to. So these are all demo tracks except drums right now. So. And triangle. Oh, Brent Triangle solo. Dang, dang, dang. Ah! We were ripping into it, man. Hey, Doug. Yes. Um, I really need you to let me know as we're doing this, like, hey, see if somebody, you know, like all the sounds guitars, shitty. Well, yeah. no, if all the guitars are too similar in tone, or we need to, you know, we've got a bunch of stuff here. We can grab different guitars. We can do, mm -hmm. you know, some people, some people already do it. Going to do capos on the choruses, but trying to keep it simple with that, like yeah. just two people with capos, everybody else without. Um, you know. That kind okay. Of stuff. Can the two people with capos go in the second row on the hard left and right? Yeah. something that, that this record touches on here and there which is my, my depression issues it keeps me from being down it gave me a purpose I could go in every day and and had a, a job to do and the other thing is is on threat to survival I kind of got to use a, a crass term I kind of got caught with my dick in my hand a little bit when it came to the writing for for that record where I didn't come off I didn't come in with anything I, I hadn't woodshed it on anything and and uh, it kind of affected where I ended up with in the writing process for, for Threat to Survival, so I wasn't going to let that happen again. It's a celebration! Woo. Is that the <laughs> Fuck, man. Awesome job. It's, damn dude, it's like one of them things. That is a killer. Fucking roller coaster! Holy He's got shit! <laughs> God One dang! Thing. I heard something in the intro. I gotta I walk out. Holy anyway. God! That's it. I had to take it into perspective too, man. How many times have we heard these songs in the last a year? Lot. It's a lot, a man. Lot. So like, even that in and of itself, yeah. to hear it through like that. Here comes Chris. Let the magic begin. No! Stop talking about my hair like that. No! I'm gonna hug you. No! You just talk Be about harassed! I have None a, of this is gonna make final cut. I have, safe, so you know. I have a safe space here. <laughs> no one in this band has any interest in standing still. And to me, that's like, if you can find other like-minded people to be in a band with who, who think that way and don't want to make the same album just because the last one did really well, you're in a good band. And there's one thing that is decidedly shine down that does carry from one record to the next though, and that is the honesty. Um, Brent and I talk about it a lot, um, that a listener can smell bullshit from a mile away. We're not ashamed by the fact that we're not perfect. We don't want to be perfect. We, we would rather see the cuts and the bruises and the scars. We'd rather, you know, we'd rather show you that so that you know that it wasn't made up what we are talking about or what we're going through and we can relate to you because we know what it's like to struggle but we also know what it's like to come out on the other side and win. <laughs> 